North Washington University women's soccer team is in a season of transition under new head coach Shannon Higgins. As Gracely Nickel reports, the Lady Colonials are banking their future on the bright young star who's a proven winner. In downtown D.C., just off the corner of 25th and M, tucked away behind the Westin Hotel, you'll find the George Washington women's soccer team practicing almost every weekday afternoon. Finding the team is one thing, finding the coach is a whole different matter. It's funny because a lot of people, like we went to the Rutgers tournament, um, indoor tournament, and we won that tournament. And um, it was funny because one of the coaches wanted to talk to our coach, and they're like, where are your coach? And she's like, we're like over there. And they're like, where, you know, the, the, she's about our size right over there, the one with the bronze ponytail. So I want to start seeing the third player combinations, the thing we're looking up, we're trying to find the player on the outside. Okay, so Shannon Higgins is used to getting lost in the crowd of players that surround her. At 23 years old, Barbara. she's one of the youngest yes. ever to head up a Division I sports oh. program. Some of the men's players come up to me so and uh, you know, said certain no, things, and, and all of a sudden your lives are going to Well, here we are at Days Inn. Uh, where, where, where is this? What's this place called? Uh, oh, uh, he was on the news. Thought I was a uh, recruit at one point. What route? So. What route? Assurances aside, Shannon Higgins is a bona fide expert of the game. As a college player, she received so every major women's soccer player is. Where is that? Out of Washington, on the way to Annapolis. Where she helped lead the Tar Heels to a fourth consecutive season. Upon graduation, she served one year as an assistant coach at George Washington, and today yeah, she's like a colonial field sergeant. How do you keep the relationship with the players such that long. is? The detection system only detected one bolt with that entire system, and that, of course, was uh, taken by that youngster, so uh, kind of a sad story to report. Temperature of an ordinary lightning bolt, 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Lightning, again, an underrated killer. Here's the Doppler 9 radar, and we are looking at a live shot now from Gannett, looking at the clouds. Some of them are ominous, but there's no severe weather on Doppler. Here it is. This is the uh, scan we're going to look at right now. Showers and thunderstorms, mainly to our east. Now, in the southeast part of the district, and then down toward Prince George's County, Charles, and St. Mary's, and Calvert County, it looks very scary. In fact, there was magenta showing up on Doppler as well. But these storms and this rain area is not... Severe. In fact, Doug is upstairs. He's shooting the tops now, right? And we can look at the tops. They're under 30,000 feet. They're between 20 and 25,000 feet. Some of the magenta color is just wind shear. It's the winds that are strong, but they're not strong at the surface at about, uh, say, two, 3,000 feet up. They're strong out of the southwest, while at the lower levels, they're lighter out of the north. Again, these are not severe, but some good rains for parts of the area. With more on the rains that were not so good last night up in Hagerstown, up to the Weather Center, more on that and other things, Doug and Doug. Yeah, Bill, part of our viewing area up in Washington County, Maryland, in the Hagerstown area, they uh, really got hit hard last night and in the uh, overnight hours. These shots uh, we got for you uh, right at the height of the storm, more than five inches of rain fell in a very short period of time, followed by a big drop in temperature. The result were power outages in many sections of Hagerstown, cars underwater, rapidly moving flood waters at that. Flood watches and warnings were posted the earth being moved around, obviously, by the high volume of water. <laughs> Excuse me, rushing. And the uh, rescue squad was yeah, out uh, very quickly it. rescuing passengers from their cars. Conditions are improving there. One other part of the country has been experiencing very heavy rain with this same cold front. That's 1,500 miles away in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, the flooding there, up to five feet deep in some areas, is threatening the area's cotton crop. That area of the South Plains near Lubbock. Uh, supplies about one quarter of the cotton grown in the United States. So it's an indication the river of high speed air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That big dip came closer and closer to us. Started off warm and humid this morning in the 70s and 80s. Then the cold air rushed in. Richmond was still 92 at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now they're in the lower 60s. That dip right over us now and through tomorrow with the unseasonably cool air. But then much warmer air will start infiltrating the high plains in the upper Midwest during the next couple of days. So this cold shot will not hang around very long, but until it leaves, it's going to be really, really beautiful. Very What's that over on the right? Daytime Spectacular, huh? Same with nighttime lows as that huge area of high pressure comes in. But look at that summer returning over the flight states. That'll be coming back no, slowly but surely. So that by the middle of next week, back into the 80s, a little bit above normal, certainly not the 90s just yet. We'll keep you close to that heat's ever coming back. But until then, nights could be in the 40s in some of the suburbs. May we remind you the latest 90 oh, degree ever in Washington, October 11th. So there's still time to do it again if it does not move. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not.
That's our report. The news continues now with Gordon Peterson and Andrea Rome. Thanks for watching. Harry. We're going along <coughs> Queen Anne Drive. We're heading for Baltimore. Just past the dead squirrel. Heading for Baltimore. We're only hoping we're not doubling back on ourselves. I'm gonna have to cut off now because we're heading uphill. See you later. Bye. Deciding to go back. Where have just come from? I'm wasting film looking at this bloody traffic. We thought we'd lost that for good. So have a look at the sky, have a look at the pylons. And um, I think what I'll do is uh, I've pressed the wrong button. I'll fade you now, I think. See you later somewhere. to the camera where we went wrong, that the road was... Um... Oh, the bridge had gone down. Yeah. <laughs> and the bridge it was on pass. It got lost on the last shots. Yeah. Yeah, why? Why? Because the, the road we should have taken yeah, showed uh, no, no, uh, no entry. And, and it was, so we missed it. Yeah. And it was not passable because the bridge over the river had been washed away four years ago. So we've wasted an hour. We're now on our way to Beaver. We're back on, we're on the 214, back on the 214, and we're going to do a left about two miles down the road. You should be talking, I'm the photographer. <laughs> and we're going to turn left into Reaver Road. Into Reaver Road, and then? This takes us straight into Annapolis. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Is that all you've got to Over say? Out. 
Yep, yeah, bye for now. It's in the can. Turn it off. This here is the South River, River at Reaver. I'm just sitting here eating my lunch, waiting for Bill to come back with the coffee, wherever he is. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Hello. He's looking all embarrassed. That's a major production, this. Right, we've just finished our tea now. I think Barbara might just be draining the last drinks of coffee. Yeah, there she is, draining the last drinks of coffee out of the cup. She won't leave anything, that girl. And now we're going, we're going back where we came from, over to the other side of the South River, where we should see the traffic, that road in the distance there where we're going, back over the uh, Reaver Bridge and along that road there. Oh, you can just see some traffic going along it now. Just, just hogging the camera again, Barbara. We just went into this restaurant here for a cup of coffee, but we got sent to the store for just a cup of coffee. Which we didn't mind, we're not too boshed. That's the store over in that corner there. See you later. It's 13 Town and County. Well, there, as you can see, we've arrived eventually in the yacht basin. With all the rich people's yachts, we'll be coming around to our yachts shortly. That's the Marriott Hotel, I've been told. There's Barbara. I told her where to go, but she's got to check. So that's the bridge we nearly went over. We managed to avoid it. I don't know what's in store from now on. this evening. Barbara wanted me to take this picture, it reminds her of a book she was reading about the deep slough. Where the stairway goes up to the top and all the carriages stop outside. Down there, all the black slaves saying yes massa. Oh and there is the old girl there. an interesting street actually. Alan? Right, here we are at Lowe's Hotel, Washington, uh, Annapolis. The camera will tell you what we've paid. And have you ever seen anything as incongruous? Two bikes, 
a hotel, $110 a night. Just looking over the balcony here. Reception area. Up. To the roof. And back to Barbara. Just 279, you'll